I'm Beth Hatch. I'm from Cleveland Public Library, and I am going to be reading a passage from The Glass Castle by Jeanette Walls. And I picked this book because it shows that even if you have a really horrible childhood, <laughs> that you can overcome your obstacles, and that um, forgiveness is the key to living a happy life. And she really goes through so many horrible things in her childhood, and I think that kids can resonate with her, and that's why I'm choosing this book. I turned 10 that spring, but birthdays were not a big deal around our house. Sometimes mom stuck a few candles and some ice cream and we all sang happy birthday. Mom and dad might get us a little present, a comic book or a pair of shoes or a package of underwear, but at least as often they forgot our birthdays altogether. So I was surprised when on the day I turned 10, dad took me outside to the back patio and asked what I wanted most in the world. It's a special occasion seeing as it how it puts you into double digits, he said. You're going up so damn fast, mountain goat. You'll be on your own in no time, and if there's anything I can do for you now, before you're gone, I want to do it. I knew Dad wasn't talking about buying me some extravagant present, like a pony or a dollhouse. He was asking what he could do, now that I was almost a grown-up, to make my last years as a kid everything I'd hoped they'd be. There was only one thing that I truly wanted, something I knew would change all our lives, but I was afraid to ask for it. Just thinking about saying the words out loud made me nervous. Dad saw my hesitation. He knelt so that I, he was looking at me. What is it? Ask away. It's big. Just ask, baby. I'm scared. You know if it's humanly possible, I'll get it for you. If it ain't humanly possible, I'll die trying. I looked up at the thin swirls of clouds high in the blue Arizona sky, keeping my eyes fastened on those distant clouds. I took a breath and said, do you think you could maybe stop drinking? <laughs> Dad said nothing. He was staring down at the cement patio, and when he turned to me, his eyes had a wounded look, like a dog who's been kicked. You must be awfully ashamed of your old man, he said. No, I said quickly, it's just I think Mom would be a lot happier, and, and plus we'd have the extra money. You don't have to explain, Dad said. His voice was barely a whisper. He stood up and walked into the yard and sat down under the orange trees. I followed and sat down next to him. I was going to take his hand, but before I could reach for it, he said, if you don't mind, honey, I think I'd like to sit here by myself. In the morning, Dad told me that for the next few days, he was going to keep himself in his bedroom. He wanted us kids to steer clear of him, to stay outside all day and play. Everything went fine for the first day. On the second day, when I came home from school, I heard a terrible groaning coming from the bedroom. Dad? I called. There was no answer. I opened the door. Dad was tied to the bed with ropes and belts. I don't know if he had done it himself or if Mom helped him, but he was thrashing about bucking and pulling at their strings, yelling, No! Stop! Oh my God! His face was gray and dripping with sweat. I called to him again, but he didn't see me or hear me. I went into the kitchen and filled an empty orange jug with water. I sat the jug next to Dad's door in case he got thirsty. Mom saw me told me to go outside and play. I told her I wanted to help Dad. She said there was nothing I could do, but I stayed by the door anyway. Dad's delirium continued for days. When I came home from school, I'd get the jug of water, take up my position by the door, and wait there until bedtime. Brian and Maureen played outside, and Lori kept to the far side of the house. Mom painted in her studio, and no one talked about what was going on. One night, when we were eating dinner, Dad let out a particularly hideous cry. I looked at Mom, who was stirring her soup as if it were an ordinary evening, and that was when I lost it. Do something, I yelled at her. You've got to do something to help Dad. Your father's the only one who can help himself, Mom said. Only he knows how to fight his demons.